Welcome back to The Hand Toolery. I'm Andrew Malacy and we are making progress on the sideboard. I'm really excited about how things are coming so far. And uh, I've got the two long front rails in front of me. There's a third one. That'll be dovetailed in, so we'll get to that a little later. But today, I'm going to get the actual long front rails uh, mortised in, so that way, basically, this thing can stand up on its own. I've got these over here. These are only, uh, I've only cut the tenons and the groove in the actual legs, as you can see here, you can see the grooves right there. So they're just sitting in grooves rather than in tenons, Never, uh, in mortises, excuse me. So I'm going to cut the mortises on those after I cut the mortises for these because I want everything to be really, uh, I want the front to be exactly right. And for that to happen, I need the spacing of these two rails this thicker bottom rail and then the two inch uh, divider rail for the, that goes between the doors and the drawers above it. So what I'm going to use are these uh, drawer or door divider rails, I call them. And essentially then, we're, I'm going to just use these to put, I'm gonna put them in between them and again, let's use them as spacers. And then that'll give us the exact spacing we need, like that. So that's all we're going to do. We're going to get these spaced out transfer that to the legs themselves, cut the mortises, and then we'll have, they'll, it'll, be able, it'll be able to stand up on its own. It's really crazy how once you get all the pieces ready, the joinery starts happening and it looks like a piece quick. We're a long ways from done being done, but we're very, very close to actually looking like furniture, so I'm excited. Anyways, let's get started. All right, so like I was saying before, I'm going to have, this is the bottom rail, and this is the rail that divides the drawers and the doors. So this is an upper, what's well, actually the middle rail. And these are some, um, well, these are some divider structures, uh, supports. They go in the middle and they separate the, these two. So what I'm going to do is then take these and use them as spacers to get the exact height and whatnot that I need. It's 18 inches, but rather than relying on tape measure, which, you know, can be a little, it can be a little finicky at times. Uh, I'm going to just use the actual structure itself. So what I'll do is I'll cut, I'll use this like this, and then I will get all my measurements from that. And uh, I'll lay it all out, right? So then what I'm gonna do is I'll start with this one since it's the bottom rail. I'll get that sucker in, I'll mortise it in. I'll use these dividers as spacers, put this guy up top, mark the mortise for that, make the mortise for this one right here, and then we'll be ready to go. All right, I'm gonna butt the bottoms of the leg up against this piece of, blo this block of wood here have them good and flush with each other. And you can see now that I've got this line right here, that's marked at four inches, that's marked at four and a half. This is the line then for the groove where it stopped at four and a half, which you can see there. So then I'm gonna to continue to mark out where the mortise is gonna go using marking gauge and whatnot, and then all that's left is to cut it. Real quick, this is the front of the rail right here, and this is of course the side is the tenon, and so this is a quarter inch down. I've got my gauge set to a quarter inch, and so I'm gonna mark it like this on the, from this is the very front right here. I know it's the front. I've got that groove behind it. And I've got this marked as my in face back. So then what I'll do is I'll just, so I'll just run a line with my gauge the length of the mortise. Before I do that though, I want to remove and relieve a little bit of material off this. So what I'll do is I'll take this quarter inch, take it like that off, and then I'll remove a quarter inch off each side and just saw it away. Because, because the key is you don't want the, the mortise to be the whole width of the tenon because then it shows the, uh, the, where the tenon stops. What you want instead is for your material to cover up the hole of the mortise. So we're going to do that first. We're going to mark, we're going to mark the removing, what, we're going to mark the waste from the tenon.
So you might be wondering why a quarter inch? Because I already had my gauge set to that and it really doesn't matter. So you just don't want to, I don't want to remove a ton because it's a very important structural piece. So quarter inch seems like the easiest way to do it. There it is, that's our tenon. I'm not worried about cleaning it up perfectly yet. I just need to get the overall dimensions of it. So I'm fine with that. And basically this is what the tenon is gonna be at this point. So, great. So now I can actually lay it out on the legs, which is the most important part right now. Front left, front right, double checking everything. Yep. And gonna make sure my piece is oriented correctly. I've marked it out, up, this is the in, this is the out. So we're gonna put the bottom of the piece on the four inch line and then mark the tenons from that. Now I'm gonna transfer those lines over to the edge where the uh, tent, where the tendon will actually go, where the mortise will actually be. So transferring them up to the outside edge. If you look at the piece here, can you see my pencil lines? That's the four inch mark. That's where the tenon goes. And that's the top of the tenon. There's my four and a half inch for the groove. So there we go. I'm gonna actually run my tenon slightly in, or I'm gonna run the mortise slightly inside of those lines and then I can always extend them out. I don't want it to be too big. Here we go, the moment of truth. I'm gonna mark down from the front. So I know this is my front right. I'm gonna mark down from the front a bit between the two lines. There, can you see the marking gauge line right there? So I'm just gonna run my tent, my mortise right along that line using the chisel. Last thing I'm gonna do before I actually cut this, I'm gonna take the chisel I'm gonna use, use it slightly inside the line here, and mark my stopping point just by a quick tap. I'm less than a millimeter inside the line. Pretty close, I'd say. I like it. I'm sitting here on my saw bench and I've got the mortise right above the legs on the saw bench. And just to let you know, I have this Audi chisel here and it's metric. And this is my Stanley Sweetheart chisels. And this is the quarter inch chisel and this is the quote unquote quarter inch chisel from Audi. And as you can see, it's a probably at least an, a 16th, maybe, well, I mean, a millimeter to a 16th larger. And uh, I decided to use this on the legs for the front rail stretchers or whatever because I want those to be a little bit meatier. The stretchers aren't really an inch uh, thick, so I've uh, decided to make it slightly more than a quarter, but uh, not. But I don't have like a three eighths, so I didn't want to go full half inch and compromise making this too big here. So I went just about, I don't know, a little bit more than a quarter, not quite three eighths on this one. And I'm just gonna do the traditional style where you're gonna put the bevel towards the way that you're going here. And I'm gonna start, I've already marked here so that way I don't blow out and it's really not that big of a deal but I just want to be conservative and just gonna march it backwards
This mortise is going to be about an inch deep, so I'm just going to really hammer away at it here. There's, there's the mortise right there, pretty well and done. I've got to just clean it up, make it exactly what I need to be, and it's ready to go. After I do the bulk of the removal, I come back with my chisels, and I just start removing the last little bit. I like to sort of go at an angle, bevel down, and just sort of flick it out. If I get something in the corner, I take a smaller chisel, very carefully removing waste and doing that, because it doesn't get caught on the sides. This one, since it's the chisel I used to mortise, it's very tight. It doesn't go all the way in very easily. It gets, well, which is good, but. So then I'll just remove the waste and uh, shake it out. And then since um, the rail is a little bit too long, I'm just gonna stand this up on end with the opening. And we're gonna start the test fit process. All right, so this is the front and this is the left side. So I'm gonna take my front left, which you can see, you can see there's FL written right there. And it's gotta go a certain way. So this is all, all right, so it doesn't even come close to fitting. It's because I left the tenon pretty, pretty uh, chunky. And I think rather than uh, making the mortise wider and risking it, I'm gonna actually uh, take down the tenon a little bit. So I'm gonna remove some off the back of the tenon because I've already made sure the front is the right depth. And so uh, if I do that, if I put the tenon here, this is the front here, it lines up perfectly with my mortise, you can see. You see how it's the right depth there? Maybe even a little thicker than it needs to be. So I'm gonna just go ahead and take the tenon down from the back. The front I'm not gonna touch, okay? Just beveling the front edges here. Oh, it's so close. It's starting to go in. At this point, it's just a system of trial and error. I'm going to very carefully remove some material. I'm trying not to do too much at any given time. What we're shooting for is a snug fit that uh, doesn't take too much persuasion. I think if I hammer this home it'll go in, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a try. All right, it almost went. As you can see, I've got a lot of shininess going on right there and a lot there. So what I'm gonna do is remove there and there on the back and give it one more try. There it is. Almost all the way closed, but I'm liking that. I'm liking what I'm seeing there. And we're gonna see. I'm gonna lay my straight edge across it. It's okay. It's a little tiny bit out of square, not much. And I mean, on a board this long, 
you can kind of manipulate it a little bit. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna I'm gonna trial and error this a little bit more and get that to be a nice fit. Close, very close. Seven minutes, I would say. Not bad. So now I take my square up to it, I make sure it gets depth, goes all the way down the whole way. And then I sort of peek at it from the side to see if it's square. It looks to be pretty, pretty close, almost entirely un unimpeded. There's a corner there I'll have to shave, but it's basically ready. And it's pretty close already, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to remove material off the back of the tenon. this one and then I'm done. show you from afar. That's starting to look like a real thing. Wow. I still have to do the rail that goes in the middle. That'll continue to make everything sturdier and whatnot, but this was pretty simple so far. So now that I got this first bottom rail in, what I've done is I've checked for level on my bench here, and you can see that my bench is basically level uh, across the length of it here. So now I'm gonna put this on top of the rail to see just how level it is on the rail on the actual sideboard. And as you can see, it's pretty stinking level. And I'm gonna check out my marks over here and over here, and I like where everything is. I've done measurements, it looks really, really close. So I'm gonna leave it at that. And then I went ahead and installed these spacer pieces. Because I've already cut most of my pieces for the, out, for the case work, uh, I'm actually gonna use the pieces as the guide rather than measuring and then cutting pieces to fit the space. So this piece I know is exactly what I want it to be. And so rather than just measuring this and hoping this fits well, I'm going to use this as a spacer right here. And then this is resting on top of it right there. And then I'm going to ascribe, I'm going to mark the line on the actual case here on the leg. I'm going to do the same there. Then what I'll do is I'll put the next spacer up there and I will put the top rail on that and do the next thing for the top rail. 
Then I'll use, whenever this is mortised in, I'm gonna transfer that around to the side here to give me this, same for the top, and then the bottom is more or less fine, so regardless. That's basically what's gonna happen in the next little bit that you'll be watching here. So again, I'm gonna use this spacer, I'm gonna mark out the mortises, cut the mortises, and then start using everything to, uh, well yeah, to make it all ready to go. Now, this problem, this isn't exactly a problem, but that's the way I'm doing it since I went ahead and did all the pieces for the case uh, first. And uh, if you were actually just to build it as you were going, and you were to put the rails in and all that stuff first, no big deal, you'd come back and just make all your dividers to fit. Um, I didn't do that, and so maybe that was a mistake on my part because now I'm having to kind of slow down my work a little bit to make sure this happens. And then also it's messing up my order of operations in a way. I could have had a lot of this just cut and ready to go already, but I'm now I'm have to build it like rail by rail all the way front to back. So I think it, it's, it's gonna be fine, but that's just what I'm gonna do and why. So here's my bottom mortise, and I've marked the tenon on that top area there. So that's the line that I need the, the bottom of the rail to sit on, and that's where the mortise is gonna be. So I'm gonna make sure that I do it. I'm gonna err on the side of making it a little low so it can rise up if necessary. All right, at this point I've got that second rail in. Everything looks really great. It's really close to square. Uh, the joints are all pretty tight. I'm very pleased with what I've got so far. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the, the measurements here and transfer them over to the back side to cut the, to cut the mortises for these rails here that are on the side. So yeah, no problem at all. Here you can see I've got them marked out where it's going to be and just imagine this isn't the exact piece but it's going to go this piece is going to go between those marks but there's going to be a groove here on the bottom and on the one that's uh, that goes in the middle with the one that goes on the top it's going to be here with the groove on the bottom the one that goes here is going to have a groove on the top groove on the top and bottom and then the one that goes all the way down here the very wide one is going to have a groove only on the top. So we've got to take that into account for the tenon. So I've put this plane back in the groove here, made sure it fits, it fits right in this groove. The depth stop is set just to this setting as well, so everything is still fine. 
And now I'm gonna cut the grooves on the top and bottom of this one here. So I'm gonna make sure that uh, I'm paying attention to which surface I'm referencing off of. It has to be off the outside surface. So I'll have to orient the plane or the wood in, in the way that, that'll best work. But before I do that, I'm gonna actually take my marking gauge like I did before. It is, it's at the right depth. So I'm gonna reference off the front here. Yep. And we're just gonna go to town. And before I do anything permanent, I'm gonna just line up the lines here to see how close we are. Is really this grain here is really tough. I'm gonna score it a little bit more. Just finished making the groove on both sides, so that's what it looks like. It's slightly offset, not bad. There's always little mistakes that happen, like the starting point always seems to drift one way for me, so I've gotta work on that. But, yeah, that's ready to go. So these tendons are really quite small now, so no big deal. That's why I really wanted to make sure the front ones were pretty large.